The next day we went out to another area, which is where the river is supposed to wash debris into a certain channel. And it happens to be in between a ferry, like a boat ferry ride place, and then a helicopter pad for tourists. So we went in between there, couldn't anchor down because that was the laws. So they had to find a crafty way to keep the boat stable, but not anchor down. They accomplished that. I was really impressed with Captain Chevy, they call him. He was awesome. He made it happen as well as his crew. Area. You got a little bit better feeling about this? I like this area better. Yeah? How can you like this area? Uh, just because it makes sense with the location and the tips that they found. And, yeah. You know, we're talking five years ago, people saying they found stuff when they weren't even looking for stuff. Yeah. And uh, it just seems like a good location. I mean, the current just kind of me right here. And the yeah. The railway station's right there. It's... It, they're mentioned too, there might be a vacuum there where they suck water into the city. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Like right there, they were talking about on the captain's seat uh -huh. about uh, how there's some turbines or something, so it makes sense where it's all coming from. You suck it right there? Yeah. So when I go in and then you guys see me walking down the street, you'll know I got <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're going to show me. Hey, guys, first, I want the vacuum. <laughs> God, I'm so to you. <laughs> exactly. They have it. Only thinks there's bones, there's going to be bones. <laughs> For sure. Next thing you know, we're getting ready to dive. Diesel Dave goes down. He's amazing. He just starts climbing through the bottom of the river, pulling up all sorts of stuff. He pulled up something he thought it was a treasure chest. It looked like a big piece of box, a wooden box. He pulled it up. I think it was, it was just nothing, but it looked cool. And then he brought up something else. So that was exciting. I was impressed by how quickly he dove in and then reached out to the corners of the the river like he got pretty far out there and moved around fast so if i was most impressed with one person looking for bones it would have been diesel day on that trip no doubt in my mind i think he was the most impressive i saw the, how fast he moved around and what he came back with and just his overall demeanor and team player five six feet deep i think wow i've just silk mud like a man. Wild time down there, it's like super dark. You see like this far in front of your face, and everything you feel, it doesn't crumble in your fingers, is a treasure. So you're like you're trying to dust it off and hold it where your flashlight is. I don't know what it is, but it's exciting. Exciting. I could get into this. Good job. Awesome. Thanks. And he is the one that actually pushed me to get in the water and do a dive by myself. You should try it. If you don't like it, we pull you right back up. Um, we actually did it at the same time, but I went down because of him. He told me I got to try it. I'm glad I did. I went in, and that was quite the experience. You excited to get down? You chose a good path. So this guy talked me into it, so. That's too If you get a chance to dive in the East River, you're looking for mammoth bones, right. you gotta say yes. Exactly. Have to do it. So I dive in and I start uh, getting an idea of what that's like and you can't see anything. You feel like you're in outer space. You start looking around, wondering where you are. You get turned around. The guys are communicating with you. It's pretty scary, actually. It's pretty extreme. I don't know if it's the most efficient way to find bones. I think there's other ways that we can do it. But it was good for me to, to understand and see what these guys go through. And I want to thank Don and his crew for, for doing that for me and, and, and watching me go down and setting it all up. And as well as Doug Bishop for keeping an eye on my gear to make sure I was set up properly. So after my dive and after a few other people's dives, a few other things were brought up, no bones, interesting stuff. Once something that looked like a hand, uh, we don't even know what that was. And so it made it exciting. Uh, but what actually was kind of where it started to get really it's not scary, but like, wow, there's something going on here is when the NYPD boat started coming up and then communicating with our boat. Next thing you know, we're in a little area and we turn around and there's policemen surrounding us. There's, I think it was at one time, there might have been six to eight total boats of NYPD and U.S. Coast Guard saying that we can't be in that area and that they have to come on board. So they come on the boat. They go around, ask questions, dig through all of our stuff. 
and decide that they can let us go. And so they let us go. But I always wondered why they came at that time because we'd been there uh, for so long and it was just towards the end of the day. And I know there was a couple other boats that are looking for the tusks right now. Um, I don't know if they had something to do with it, maybe because the way that they were approaching us, that trip was kind of weird. So anyways, they, Heavy D got on the comms with the uh, Coast Guard. They were talking. I thought that was pretty cool the way he handled that. And I think a lot of the Coast Guard and NYPD knew who Heavy D and Diesel Dave were, so they were friendly. So anyways, that's how that ended. If we went to New York, there has been a mammoth tusk piece that has been found by Don and his brother. They have a picture of it. It's very interesting. I don't know exactly where it was found, who, who was there and who, what the details are, but it definitely is a mammoth tusk piece. So Chris, he's the one that found the step bison in Jawbone. We talked to him, we stayed in touch with him. He continues to look for artifacts in deep ocean areas, as well as doing some East River dives. Doug Bishop, who was on, I didn't talk about him much, but he continued searching for bones, missing people and things of that nature. And then you got Heavy D and his crew. They continue to do all sorts of things. But our goal is to bring this crew back together to go on another expedition, whether that's gonna be in Florida, New York, Alaska, that's all to be determined, but there's more expeditions to be had. We may end up going out to East River again, depending on what we feel with our statistics and analysis and deep diving with paleontologists and museum. If we find more concentrated possibilities of bones being in New York, I think we would go out there and really focus on one area with a full crew uh, to see what we can do there. If not, we're gonna go out to so many other locations, discovery sites throughout the world. We have gotten invites to Argentina, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, Montana, Madagascar, and Michigan. So we're getting inquiries, we're getting tips, we're getting people that want to be a part of the Bone Rush, uh, whether they want to be explorers or they want to be discovery site hosts. So they found a spot or they want us to dig. And the last one I didn't mention is Arizona, right here in Arizona where Bone Rush is based. That's where we have one that we're looking at. So there's all sorts of opportunities here. We hope that you'll connect with us, stay in touch, and uh, we'll keep you in tune with what we have going on at Bone Rush.